do you want to see Asian Pacific Americans achieve in your lifetime? In my lifetime, what I would like to see Asian Pacific Americans achieve would be to contribute to a society that is more just and one that is safe for all people. So with the work that we're doing now, the groundwork that we're taking action and are being active with, I hope that we can continue to grow together in a positive way so that the issues that we've focused on in regards to race and identity is no longer an issue. I would like to have Asian American to have a position in place. And I'm talking about in this historical context of we are part of the history you know, in my case, we are part of the art history, you know, specifically, we're part of the Chicago art history, Chicago music history. And, you know, so goes to political activities and business activities and all that stuff. I think we feel a lot of things that we contribute has been dismissed. So in my lifetime, I would like to see that change and we have a position in the history. What is your advice to youth in general? My advice for youth in general is just to engage and connect, to think about building community. I think it's very important for us to put our phones down and really (laughs) find ways to engage with others and to also have a diverse experience, you know, seek out communication, seek out connections with those who are different from you. There's so much to learn and so much that you and I can teach others. So yeah, just thank you. So in general, this is the same thing I tell to my kids. I have been telling to my kids, my students and my, you know, apprentices in, in the arts is read and write. That's my advice. Don't forget to read and write convenience of understanding things. There are, there is a lot of pictorial image representations these days. And, and also your smartphone does everything, right? Well, smartphone, you kind of read, but I'm talking about read, you know, books, read or write journals or read and write, right? So because it is a process of, uh, that we have this a very much of an intellectual process that we practice, that we kind of read about something, we read the story, and we digest, we interpret, and the output will be, you know, write something, you know, write journals, write letters, right? And it doesn't matter if you're typing it or if you're handwriting it. You just have this activity of reading and writing, and it's going to help you. That's great advice. I know you have a Twitter handle, though. <laughs> right? <laughs> so, you know, here's, here's the thing that, that I say about this. Like, rather than listening to lots of music to make the music, read more stories to make the music. Same thing with the movie. Rather than watching a lot of movies to be making movies, read lots of stories and read lots of writings and make a movie. I'm asking the youth and people in general, if you want to change things, please go out and vote. Not only vote, but pay attention to your aldermen, your congressmen, all the politicians and what they're doing. They work for us. Power starts with your community, and it also starts with education. This is how we learn to understand each other. It starts with grammar school, how we interact with each other, learn each other's background. What is your advice to Asian Pacific American youth? You know, one of our heroes in the Philippines is Jose Rizal, and his quote has been, he who does not know how to look back at where he came from will never get to his destination. And I find this quote by Jose Rizal an important one, that it is important for us to look back at history. It is important for us to connect with our grandparents, even our parents, having intergenerational connections, hearing your stories from your aunts and uncles, because that can shape, that can shape maybe the direction that you want to move towards. This kind of a scary statement, but you know, Mm -hmm. 
minority, we have to work twice as hard, three times as hard, four times as hard to be in the place, you know, because, because of the social system that we have. But we, on the other hand, it's a graded thing because we work, we continue to work. So for the Asian American people, let's just don't forget to, don't forget to produce stuff. We continuously produce and do things. You know, so be active and be active on whatever you do. You know, never stop. What do you want people to say about you when you're not here anymore? When I'm not here anymore, I would hope that people can remember me as someone who is an artist, teacher, an organizer, a researcher. I would hope that the work that I do in the community has helped to uplift Mm -hmm all of the things that we hope to achieve, which is just a a better life. I don't know. I think there are a lot of people that don't like me, Irene. (laughs) Uh, Who cares as long as they like your art? You're you're one of the few people like me, like me. I doubt that. um, (laughs) Well, because I have to be very specific about things to, to maintain my artistic endeavor. Right? So I can't accept everything. So sometimes I'm very difficult about that. Generally speaking, I think I'm not really liked by a lot of people. I feel like I'm not really, you know, I'm not really easy to, to uh, work with. Oh, I would beg to differ. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Tatsu. Hear me what I want to say. This month's theme, which I actually came up with pre incident in Atlanta, which happened in March 2021. I actually had this theme before that. But today's theme is, hear me what I want to say. Is there anything I haven't asked you about that you want to talk about that relates to the theme or, or just otherwise? Hear me what I want to say. I think hear me is consistently that we, we have been talking about, Irene, that mm-hmm. we are dismissed in social positioning. You know, so we need to earn as a member of the society. And, and I think in many ways, you know, we're, we're not really respected enough for glorious multicultural Asian American diaspora. You know, we're not respected for it. And, and I'd like to hear me saying that to everybody that we are very, very interesting, multicultural, unique bunch of people as an Asian American. So let's not forget that. Thank you for tuning in to the Aniri Access Series, Asian Pacific American Heritage Month 2021 edition. The Aniri Access Series has been so lucky to have just a few minutes here today with Ginger Leopoldo. Ginger, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you as well. I very much appreciate having the time to speak with you today. Thank you. Is there a name for, for I love saxophone. Is there a name for Francis Horst? I don't know if he has a name for it. Yet. How to turn your echo into an echo uh, home and Sorry. Make a hands-free call with your echo. First, <laughs> sync your contacts using the Alexa app. What happened to that? Did we say Alexa? I don't know. Hold on, okay? I have your bio up here. I should have turned the volume down. Oh, my God. Thank God it's not a live Zoom. I'm sorry. I forgot to turn the, the volume down. I had your bio oh, okay. up. I'm no. using it as a monitor. Oh, my God. So Alexa started talking. Did we? We didn't say Alexa. <laughs> I'm going to turn it. I'm well, sorry. Yeah, sometimes they, she thinks she, you said. So that's why I'd rather do these pre-taped and then I can have everything perfect with your yeah, music. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So let's see. Well, who are we talking about? Um, three, two, one. Let's. Can you redo that thought? Three, two, one. Happy Asian Pacific. American Heritage Month. Happy Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. Happy Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. Happy Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. Month.